Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about all the sliders that are in the sky replacement filter in Luminar 4. And I'm going to talk about how you would adjust the image after you replace the sky. We're going to start out with an image that looks like this and end up with an image that looks like this. We're going to be working on this image. This is the Jefferson Memorial in Washington, DC. And I had the opportunity to go to the top of the Washington Memorial. And I took this shot by just shooting out those tiny windows that are at the top of the Washington Memorial. Unfortunately, as you could see, the sky wasn't very interesting. So this is a perfect photo to drop in a more compelling sky. And we, of course, are going to do it in Luminar 4. Now, I'm going to jump right over to the creative panel and I'm going to go to AI Sky Replacement. And for this demo, I'm just going to use a built-in sky. So I'm going to go to Sky Selection, and I'm going to go to Sunset Clouds 1. Main thing at the beginning you want to make sure is that the directional light is the same. When I took the shot, the sun was to my right, and the replacement sky has the sun on that side as well. So the directional light is the same. Overall, the blending is okay, but it's not perfect. If you look over here on the far left, you could see that we have an issue right there. Also, the light just doesn't seem to be perfect as far as color temp and everything, but we could fix all that. There's a lot of control with this AI Sky Replacement Filter. Now, first of all, at the very top, you have horizontal blending. And one thing I should add is that these sliders, they're kind of dependent on one another. So you may move a slider to fix one issue and then a different slider is going to bring that issue back. So uh, it's kind of uh, something where you should know exactly what these sliders do. Then you could zero in on the issue and hit the correct slider right off the bat to fix it. Now, at the top, horizontal blending. This is the or horizon blending, I'm sorry. This is the actual blend that is right at the horizon. And if I move this to the extreme right, you can see it's allowing some of the original sky to come through and it's diminishing the replacement sky. If I move it to the left, it will make the replacement sky more prominent and the uh, original sky less prominent. Now it doesn't change the actual horizon position. It just makes that blending right in that area. It affects that. Unfortunately, it did not fix our issue over here. Now, Horizontal blending, if it just doesn't look quite right at the horizon, uh, move that around and see if you could get a better blend. If you want to reset the slider back to its default position, just double click on the slider itself and it will reset back to where it was at the beginning. Now you may find that moving all these sliders, you kind of went down a rabbit hole and now it's kind of all messed up. If that's the case, just click on this little backward arrow right here and you'll just reset the entire filter then you could go back in and put in the cloud uh, that you used and start from scratch now horizon position is the actual position of the replacement sky on the horizon of the original image now if I move it to the right you'll see I'm starting to push it up so now we, we have the actual bottom of the sky image way up above the horizon and the original sky is showing through and if i move it to left you can see it pushes it down so this is a, a good uh, filter to use to try to get the clouds exactly where you want them in the image it again doesn't really affect the original image as long as luminar knows exactly where that horizon line is and hit it perfectly like it did on this image you won't have an issue now I'm going to double click on the slider just to put it back to its default position. Now relight the scene. Uh, when you drop in a sky, it tends to relight the scene a little bit to try to get the, basically mainly the color temperature to match. And if your sky is really bright and your scene is really dark, it would make your original scene a little lighter. So it just looks a little more um, acceptable. If you want to uh, change that, move the slider. And you can see as I move it to the right, it's making my original image darker. If I move it to the left, it's making my original image lighter. 
And I'll double click on that to reset it. All right, sky global. When it says global, that's referring to the replacement sky. So this is how prominent the replacement sky will be in the image. Now we still have this issue over here on the far left, right? It didn't blend right. And you'll notice that if I take sky global to the left, it's making that replacement sky less prominent and it's allowing the original sky to come through. If I move it to the extreme right, it makes my replacement sky, the replacement sky more prominent and it actually fixed this issue over here. So that is a real handy slider and I found that that, that works out uh, usually best when you don't have perfect blending. Uh, so remember Sky Global. That way, as I mentioned, these sliders kind of affect one another. And if you do have a blending issue like I have, you could jump right to the slider, fix it, and then be done. Now I'm going to reset it just for this demonstration so that we're back where we were and we still have that issue. I'll go to Advanced Settings. Now there's Close Gaps. To me, this doesn't always work as well. Um, for example, if I move it to the left, I'm going to start to uh, have it blend, or it's going to bring some of that new sky onto the land. And I don't want that, of course. So as I move it to the left, you can see now the sky is starting to come down in here. It's closing that gap over there, but it's also... Uh, messing up this area over here. So as I move it to the left even more, you can see then the clouds are way over here. Fixed our issue, kind of. We still have a little bit of an issue there. Now if I go to the right, it's going to just make a lot more gaps. So it's making bigger gaps. So my experience with closed gaps is that it um, works best uh, in very like small, minute movements. So if you just have uh, maybe a tower jutting up into the sky or a tree or something like that, and there's just like this minor little gaps there, then closed gaps often will work well if you just move it a tiny bit. Uh, but extreme movements like this tend to just mess it up. Now sky local has to do with the original sky in the image. It's similar to sky global. Sky global, though, dealt with the new sky, right? It made the new sky more prominent or less prominent in the image. Remember, if I move sky global to the left, it makes the replacement sky less prominent, as you could see. Now, sky local just deals with the original sky in, in a similar way, though. Now, if I move this to the extreme left and give it a second to render, you could see it really didn't do much here. We still have that issue there. But if I move it to the extreme right, what it will do is it's going to make the original sky less prominent in the image. And you can see it fixed our issue here. So Sky Global and or Sky Local fix the issue that I had with this image. And in my experience messing around with this filter, these are the two most important sliders to get that perfect blend um, in what I found. So I'll reset it double click on it. Now sky defocus. Now often if you're shooting at a wider aperture, your sky, the original sky in the image is going to be blurry. And some of the things in the background, background elements will be blurry as well. And it just won't look right if you're going to drop in a perfectly focused sky on an image that has background elements that are blurry. So you would just move this sky defocus to the right just to make it look proper. Now in this case, I don't think I need to because I shot in an aperture to achieve as much depth of field as possible. Now flip sky, if that light happened to be going, coming from the opposite direction, I could flip it so it goes this way, uh, flip it back. So remember that. Now sky temperature and sky exposure, this affects mainly the sky only. It really won't affect the original image as much. Uh, for example, if I move sky temperature to the right, it makes the sky a lot warmer. If I move it to left, it makes it a lot cooler. You can see it does affect the original image slightly. Like if you look at the side of the Jefferson Memorial or you look at the cherry blossoms that are white, as I move sky temperature to the right, you'll see it will take on a little bit of a yellow tinge. So it does affect that as well. That is probably because I mentioned the uh, this. The sliders are all kind of tied in together. Relight scene is relighting the scene. 
So that is affecting that as well. Now sky exposure, just if it doesn't look right. If it's too bright or too dark, you can move that around to get it to blend better. So I'll reset that. And that's really all the sliders. Now, um, I just want to talk about how to make this look best possible, how you would go about doing this. So I mentioned you should try to probably move as uh, few sliders as possible. Now that we know what they do, we know that Sky Global uh, did a pretty good job of getting rid of that gap on the far left, right? Uh, sky Temperature, I just personally, for uh, creative reasons, want the image to look a little warmer. It was, in the, was morning when I took this, so I want to move Sky Temperature to the right a little bit and warm that up. Okay, so I'm really done with the sky replacement filter, but I'm really not done with the image. I want to make you aware now what adjustments, where they'll affect. Now if I want to come in here and I want to warm up, let's say, the land and not the sky, I could do it right from this point. Any adjustments I do now only affect the original image. They won't affect that new sky we just dropped in. So if I go to light and I go to the light filter and I go to, I'll just for this demonstration at the moment, I'll show you exposure. If I move exposure up, you'll see it's making mainly the original image brighter. It's not affecting most of the sky. Where the blend is, it's affecting it a little bit, but otherwise it's not affecting the original sky. So any adjustments I do at this point are really affecting this bottom part. So I want to warm that up a little bit just to kind of better match the warmth I I created in the sky. So I think that looks pretty good right there. Now, let's say if I, you know, I did more and I, I maybe I it highlights a little up and I did a lot more adjustments here and I did it to this. Everything I'm doing now affects the bottom part. Now I want to do adjustments to affect the entire image. What you're going to have to do is add another layer. Go to the layers uh, pa palette and go to the plus sign and I would add a new stamped layer. So what we're doing is we're now actually combining the sky and the original image together onto a stamped layer right here. Now the adjustments I do will affect everywhere and to demonstrate that I'll go to light and I'll again go to exposure and you can see now it affects everything. So any adjustments I do here affect the entire image. So I could go to, let's say, AI Enhance, and I could uh, push the AI Enhance filter to the right. Uh, let's see, I could do structure. I could add some structure to the image as well. That kind of looks a little bit overcooked. I'm overdoing it um, because I don't know if you realize to talk and try to keep your train of thought when you're talking about a subject and then adjusting something artistically, two different sides of the brain, and sometimes they get disconnected. And then if I stop and look at this and I go, wow, that doesn't look really good at all. You know, I overdid it. Uh, but I hope you understand that. So we're going to reset this. But anyway, you get the idea, and I think we'll just come in with a vignette. Yeah. Put a little bit of a darker vignette around it. I'll go to advanced settings, and I'll add a little inner light. And I think that looks pretty good. So there's our beginning image, and there's our finished image. That's it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>